All right, my friendly rock stars, let's get it cracking tonight. Um, we did our vanilla Arch install. We did our Windows 11 Arch Linux dual boot thing. And I wanted to keep going about Arch Linux and talk about a really cool Arch distro that I think Arch beginners should take a peek at. I wish I would have known about it earlier. Um, what are some of the Arch Linux derivatives? Manjaro, Arco Linux, Endeavor OS, uh, Bada, Sola, I don't know. There's a bunch of them. But today I want to talk about a really cool one. Let me bring up the web page. Boom! Garuda Linux. Garuda Linux comes in KDE, XFCE, GNOME, Cinnamon, uh, Qtile, IW3M, and Sway, which are tiling window managers. And actually, there's a bonus that I'll show you in a minute. But let's scroll down and read a little bit about Garuda. It has easy installation. That's one issue for new Arch Linux users, right? Some of y'all liked my Arch Linux installation, you know, using the command line. However, some users aren't there yet, but would still like to learn about Arch and use the AUR. Garuda has hand-picked desktop themes, appealing shell look. I know they use Fish. Fish makes working in the terminal a little bit easier. It uses ButterFS as the default file system with compression. That's really cool. You can roll back your system. And actually, Garuda uses a ButterFX tool that I've switched to on my other non-Garuda installations. I used to use uh, Snapper GUI, and now I use their ButterFS Assistant that we'll see later. Also, they have a Garuda Assistant for common tasks along with Snapper, just like I was talking about a minute ago. And this is really neat, and it makes diving into Arch a lot easier if you don't know your wizard's way around the terminal. Along with the AUR, it also has the Chaotic AUR. The Chaotic AUR is a repository featuring one of the bigger pre-compiled you don't have to compile it on your system. Faster installs, boom! Among the selection of software are a lot of emulators, kernels, games, themes, and other commonly used tools. So this makes installing things that might be hard to install or harder to install on Arch a breeze. And we'll look into that a little bit later. Has a special web browser that's based on LibreWolf. LibreWolf is actually what I use on my system. It's called Fire Dragon, and from what I've seen, I like it. There's a GUI for managing drivers and kernels. Boom! This one's pretty light, but whatever. And uh, this is really cool, Garuda Gamer. It's a GUI for installing curated gaming software like DOSBox, Steam, Emulation Station, all sorts of different emulators. It's pretty spiffy. It's a rolling release. It's kind of what Arch is built on. So Garuda is also a rolling. It uses the Linux Zen kernel. I don't love that, but it's a kernel that's optimized for desktop, multimedia, and gaming. So Garuda is a good choice if you have that graphics card, if you have that desktop rig that you want to push the hardware with. And it'll make it a lot easier too. Ease of use is a big thing. It's always free, it's open source. It's on GitHub, you can go look at it. Did I mention it's really pretty? So let's go up and I'll show you how to grab Garuda. We'll click on the download link. Boom! We're gonna have to have 30 gigabytes of storage, four gigabytes of RAM, video card with OpenGL 3.3 or better. Now I can tell you that my ThinkPad T480 with onboard video works just fine. 64-bit. So the installation procedure, we're gonna boot the PC and press the manufacturer specific key to open our device's setup. Mine is enter on a ThinkPad, but escape, delete, F1, F2, F9, F10, F11, F12, or Google for your machine, baby. Disable fast boot and secure boot, blah, we know that. It's in your uh, bias settings. If your firmware supports UEFI, Set it up to use that. Most systems that I have use that also, unless it's a VM or a Proxmox, but we're not gonna worry about that. Create a boot, bootable USB using Etcher, Ventoy, or Rufus. And we'll boot to the USB drive and install. 
we're not going to talk about dual booting today. However, you could use some of my old videos and get the same thing done. You can install Windows 10 first and then install Garuda on the other half using this video and the other video to get that rock in. So there's a few different flavors of Garuda. The Garuda KDE Dragonized. It's all pretty, looks fresh, has all those sick themes. There's the KDE Dragonized Edition, and then there's the KDE Dragonized Gaming Edition. We're gonna install the Gaming Edition today, just in case it has any extra stuff, but uh, you can kind of decide. If you're not gonna do a bunch of Steam stuff, you could probably go with the uh, regular Dragonized Edition. If you want to play games and uh, use that special hardware you have, I'd probably select the Gaming Edition. You can also get it in GNOME, Cinnamon, XFCE, or a Tiling Window Manager. As I said before, I want to scroll down a little bit. You have the popular Window Managers. However, go down a little more, super advanced users, there is a Garuda Linux Hyperlint. And you guys know how much I like Hyperlint. This is fresh. We might need to take a look at this a little later. I wonder how Garuda and Hyperlint work. I wonder what kind of theming or setup they give you there. I'd like to dig into this a little bit later. So, for today's procedure, we're gonna download the Gaming Edition and we'll grab that ISO. I'm not gonna cover this a lot, but you can go to etcher.bolina.io. You just click download. If you're on Windows, grab the Etcher for Windows Portable version. Mac OS, grab that version. If you're on Linux, I like to grab the app image. And Bolina Etcher will allow you to burn your Garuda.iso file to a USB stick. I'm going to be using Ventoy today. I won't cover it a lot, but what Ventoy does, and you'll see this, which is why I'm telling you, um, it allows you to copy several ISOs to one USB and boot into that. With all that being said, let's spin over here and pull up our ThinkPad. Boom! I've already pressed enter, and it's waiting for me to tell it what to do. I'm gonna press F12 to choose a temporary startup device. I'll pick my USB. And this is gonna boot me into Ventoy, but if you used Bolina Etcher, you'll boot right into Garuda. As you can see down here, I have both the Garuda Dragonized Gaming version and the Garuda Dragonized. Let's go ahead with the Gaming Edition, and I'm gonna speed through this install because this isn't an install video. So you enjoy the music, and let's rock and roll, baby! Well, whiz bang, we're all done, cats. Went pretty easy, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, the keen eyed of y'alls will see that the uh, aspect ratio on my pass through card wasn't correct, but we'll get that all sorted after we reboot. So let's remove our USB stick and click done to restart now, baby. Garuda Linux, here we come, boo. All right, first boot. What are we gonna get, baby? Oh, we got that password. That Lux encryption, you know I love it. And here we are. We'll boot right into Garuda. Loading up that Linux Zen kernel. Garuda. Garuda. All right, and here's our very first boot into Garuda Linux. I think we got a wallet service up here. We'll use classic. Set up a password. We need to log into our Wi-Fi. And here we are. Welcome to Garuda Linux. Okay, it's gonna wanna do an update, I think. We'll type our password. 
and we'll let Pac-Man do his thing. I can already see that Garuda is helping us from the minute that we boot into our system. It's getting us the faster mirror list. It's using rate mirrors, not reflector. Hmm, I always use reflector. So let me know down in the comments. What's rate mirrors and how does it uh, stack up to reflector? So we're gonna let that update go and I'll catch you on the flip, baby. That was a lot, but our system is now updated. We'll press enter. All right, guys, and we're back from that update. I do wonder why does Garuda do that huge update after the software is installed? Maybe I would assume uh, to make sure all the drivers and stuff for your particular hardware gets installed, but I feel like they could do that through the installer. At any rate, right after we uh, finish with that update, we're at the Garuda Setup Assistant. And let's read through, it might be a little hard for you to read, do you need printer, scanner, and Samba support? Well, I'd like Samba support, uh, so I'll select this. I'd normally just install Samba myself. Do you want to install additional Garuda wallpapers? Yes. Look at that third option. Do you need pen testing software? This installs the Black Arch repo and settings. Black Arch is a flavor of Arch Linux that tries to be like Kali. Um, I'm not going to install this now, but that's really cool that you can install that. I guess we can keep going on the different tabs here. Let's go to input. I don't need Asian fonts. Um, I don't need any of this stuff. This is for other language fonts. Software centers. I don't want GNOME firmware, nor an app image launcher. I'll install Discover because that's the KDE Plasma one. Let's go over to kernels. So this installed Linux um, Zen which I haven't used in the past, but I'm just going to leave that. Uh, if you are on AMD hardware, there's Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 4, and lots more options than normal Arch. I don't need LibreOffice. I'm not going to install that. I'm not going to install any Office software, actually, but there's a lot. Browsers. Now, I will say that um, Garuda has this Fire Dragon web browser. It's a fork off of LibreWolf. And I'm just going to use that for this video. I want to test it out, see how it is. I'll install Firefox, ESR, just to have that. I don't need any email on here. Comms, I can install Telegram Desktop, Discord, Element, Jitsi, Signal. I don't see Zoom. There's Zoom. I'll install Zoom just to see how it does. Go over to Internet. At any rate, as you can notice, I'm selecting Qubit Torrent, FileZilla, Putty. Why not? The Garuda Setup Assistant really helps you install all of the different softwares you might want. Audacious is a good uh, audio player. I'll select VLC. I'll take GIMP. I'll do Handbrake just to see how it handles all this stuff. There is a lot of software in here that you can take advantage of. Development, I want Vim. Heck, I'm going to install Visual Studio Code. Why not? Oops, I'd rather do the open source software version. You can still get the extensions. Lots of neat stuff in there. GitHub Desktop, Cockpit. I'm not going to install it, but lots of options here. I'll install VirtualBox just to see how that handles it. Sometimes on Arch Linux, you have to do a few things. Let's see how VirtualBox uh, installs under Garuda. I don't need any of that. So I've selected a, a nice suite of software. Let's see how this handles it. I'll type in my password and you guys will get some cool music and a montage. Let's go! Actually, I have to check. I forget VirtualBox host DKMS or VirtualBox host modules Arch. One's for Intel, one's for AMD. So let's go make sure. Let me snap this over here. Oops, do that again. So what I'm going to search here is Arch Linux VirtualBox. And we'll just read here. Okay, installation. Install the VirtualBox package. For the Linux kernel, install VirtualBox host modules. For any other, oops, for any other kernel, we want VirtualBox host DKMS. 
Okay, so we know that now, and we'll use number one. And I will replace GVIM, even though GVIM is probably air quotes better. And here we go. Boom! I'm sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. We're sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. Okay, that looks like it's done. We had a success. So that was really easy to install a suite of software which VirtualBox would have been harder. Discord, well, now Discord on Arch is pretty easy, but sometimes there's packages that take some work. I'm going to test that. I'm gonna open up Firefox, or actually Fire Dragon, which is LibreWolf from Garuda, and I'm gonna go over to the Hunix website, and I'm just gonna quickly download the Hunix VirtualBox um, software. And we'll let that finish in the background just so in a moment we can test if Garuda installed VirtualBox in a way that is usable. Now let's walk through some of the other Garuda Linux features. First, Garuda Assistant, baby. We can do a system update, which ours should be all up to date, but I'm just gonna run it to check. You know, all you'd have to do is go to your terminal and type sudo pacman-syyu, run that, and then peru-s if you're using peru and that would update your system. But Garuda does it all for us. It updates the mirror lists and makes sure we're ready. We'll have to check out that chaotic AUR. That's a Garuda feature. I don't know what the chaotic AUR is, but, well, I do know what it is. It's an AUR that has packages that are pre-built or pre-compiled. So installation should be a lot faster and Garuda uses that chaotic AUR. We'll have to check that out. Okay, we're done. We already knew our system was up to date, but fine. There's an option here to reinstall all packages. I guess if your system breaks and you don't want to go back to a different ButterFS snapper image, you can reinstall all packages. You can edit your repos. I'm going to click that there and it shows us right away. We have the Garuda repo, core, extra, multi-lib, chaotic, AUR, and custom. Cool. We can refresh the mirror list, remove a database lock, clear the package cache, refresh key rings, remove orphans, and clear caches. That's cool. Now this is neat, the ButterFS slash snapper. This tool, ButterFS Assistant, I've actually changed to this on my systems. I used to use a snapper GUI, and actually let me open up a terminal and see if we have snapper installed here. Okay, no, oh yeah, we do. So the way I do it on my system is I type snapper ls, and you can see the uh, uh, different snapper images. Every time you update your system, snapper takes an image of your machine and you can roll back to that. And then you can do like snapper RM, you know, the number there, one, two, three, four, or whatnot. However, the tool in Garuda is really nice. And I'm gonna show it off here. Give it our password. It's a fully GUI tool. It gives you all the options to clean up and fix your ButterFS file system. You can scrub it, you can balance it. These are, these are uh, maintenance things that you wanna do. I'm gonna go to the last tab. You can set up ButterFS maintenance. And I'm just gonna click apply. It's the, you know, just their suggestions. And that's really cool because it takes care of all this stuff that on my systems I used to do in the command line. Uh, there's snapper settings. I'm gonna click enable timeline snapshots and I'm just gonna leave the defaults. That keeps an hourly save, a daily save, a number save. These are your ButterFS snapshots. I will save that and, and I'll apply system D changes. That's really nice. Uh, here you can see, this is the output of that snapper ls command I just did, but it's really nice to see it right here. And from the original boot of our system, we can see this is pre our update and post our update and this is pre our software that we installed and post our software we installed. So if you ever install something and it messes up or breaks your entire system, you can just roll back to a different image. List our sub volumes, but I'm not gonna go there. 
This is just a really nice ButterFS Assistant, and I'm now using this on other systems. Really cool. We'll go to the next Garuda Assistant tab, System Components. And right here, you can see everything. We're using Pipewire, um, our virtualization. We have VirtualBox and Vert Manager. It just tells you about your system really easily, and you can make changes. If you want to go from Pipewire to Pulse Audio, boom, just make that change. Click Apply, and that's it. We'll go on to Settings. Same thing. You have your default shell, which is Bash. Um, I know that when you open a terminal, it drops you into Fish. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But it's cool that our default is Bash, so all of our scripts work. Choose DNS service. You can change your DNS service from right in here. There's just a lot of options that on a vanilla Arch system, you're going to be creating. Or maybe you're not going to be utilizing and creating. That's kind of the point of Garuda, in my opinion. Uh, system specs tells you everything about your system. You can copy for the forum. There's a really cool uh, Garuda forum that you can log into. And other diagnostics where you can get journal errors, system deanalyze, or your last Pac-Man log. All right, that's Garuda Assistant. I'm going to close it. You remember I said this is fish. By the way, um, I'd like to figure out what this NeoFetch-like Garuda thing is here because it's really cool how it has graphical output. That's neat. Um, so what is fish? You already know if you're going to do like, let's say we want to go to the downloads folder. We could do CD and type down and then we can push tab to complete that, right? Um, fish has a lot of other options. If I type CD downloads, I know I could just push tab, but I'm going to push the, the right arrow key. And that's that'll do that for any command. So, you know, this system is brand new, so there's not a lot. But say you um, say you do sudo shut down now a lot. I'm not going to run this command because it'll shut us down. But fish would allow you if you do sudo shut, and then it'll show you sudo shut down now, and you can just push the right arrow key. It's really cool. And there's a lot of other things. I think there's a alt L does an LS. Fish is really cool. So I'll exit out of here. Um, here's a really neat one. This is Garuda Gamer. Let's check this out. Garuda Gamer allows you to install games, uh, Steam, Lutris, Game Hub, all these different game things that uh, Linux gamers are going to want. It already has Steam, so we should have Steam right there. Steam's already installed, and it already has Lutris, Bottles, Mini Galaxy, Wine, Wine Tricks, Proton. So that's cool. But let's go over to Emulators. Uh, let's select a couple of these. I am going to install Emulation Station. Um, I'm going to install DOSBox, install Wagedroid. Let's just do a lot. We'll do ScumVM and MAME. So let's add those three. Uh, Wagedroid, MAME, Emulation Station. I think DOSBox is already in there. Yeah, it is. But let's uh, add those real quick and see how easy it is. And boom, Garuda takes over. And it's going to install those. Lickety split, baby! Okay, we're done. Now let's test that out. Let's uh, type emulation station and see if it's that easy. We're on a GUI Arch Linux install and we have emulation station on top of that. Will this just boot it? We can't find any systems. Okay, we just need biases, which they legally can't install biases. If we add the biases to emulation station, which you can easily find by a Google search, Arch Linux emulation station, and then like archive.org emulation station bias, that's pretty cool. Let's try something else. Wagedroid. So we have to initialize. I will use the defaults. Wagedroid allows you to run Android softwares uh, within Linux. And it's really neat that Garuda gives you so many options. And, and I'll even say ideas for doing things. So anyway, Wagedroid is installing uh, the system OTA, vendor OTA. I don't really know what those are. Leave me a comment down below. Garuda is allowing me to do things that I wouldn't even have thought about on my Arch Vanilla install. That's Garuda Gamer. I think it's pretty cool. We'll try to run DOSBox. That's easy enough. And boom, we're right there. We can just mount C to C colon downloads. Downloads. And yeah, there's our Hunix OVA coming in. 
DOS box works just fine. That's really cool. If you want to play PlayStation 2 games, you can install an emulator. Atari, install an emulator and get right to work. This is pretty fresh. I'm going to exit Gruta Gamer. And we'll let Wadroid keep doing its thing. Uh, Garuda Settings Manager. This was kind of weak in my opinion, but it does have your hardware configuration. Um, you can just select different graphics drivers and whatnot. Your kernel, language packages. It's not too much. It's not like, um, like the KDE Settings app. It does give you settings for Garuda that are specific to Garuda. Ooh, the Network Assistant was cool. Garuda Network Assistant. Uh, you can go in here, you can create a Wi-Fi hotspot. I mean, these are all things that you can do with Arch Linux, but Garuda just makes it easier. You can do a trace route or a ping, you can change your drivers. There's my Ethernet and wireless card. Uh, Garuda boot options, I think, is that Grub stuff? I don't remember. Yeah, it is, it is Grub stuff. Garuda has a background image, not really a theme, but it allows you to change your Grub settings through a GUI. That's nice. There's a system cleaner. That's pretty cool. Oh, look, System Cleaner just runs right there. What is it doing? I want to know what did it do? It looks like it installed Stacer. What did that cleaner do in the background? Yeah, it has a System Cleaner in here for package caches, crash reports, logs, caches and trash, blah, whatever. We've already went over the ButterFS Assistant. There is a Partition Manager. I prefer Gparted, so I'll just probably install that. And other Garuda services, there's a website and a wiki, right, right, right? But there's also a forum. You can click on the Garuda forum and it'll open up a website. You can make an account and you can talk about issues that you may have. Uh, how to use Garuda. You might get tips, help from other Garuda users. Now, we have downloaded Hunix over there. Let's test out that VirtualBox installation. I'm gonna close down the Garuda helper now. Let's load up VirtualBox. If you install VirtualBox on Arch Linux, you have to jump through a couple other hoops, and I just wanna see if Garuda took care of that for us. Let's attempt to import. The file is in our downloads, and it's called Hunix XFCE. This should create two VMs that allow us to get on the dark web or use Hunix. I have a Hunix video if you're interested. Go check it out. Okay, that looks like that's working. And normally you have to add your user to the VBox users group and add a couple other software packages for VirtualBox. So that is good. Garuda installs VirtualBox with no issues from the user. Pretty cool. That Wadroid is now done. I'm going to click done. Hunix was installed with no issues. Plus one for Garuda, baby. So, what do you guys think about Garuda Linux? I think it's pretty fresh. I have heard some backlash saying that some things might break after using the system for a while. But from what I see on a day one or installation one basis, isn't that? I see the Garuda team really helping a new Arch user to use Arch in a way that some power users don't even. So I'm going to give this a stamp of approval. And look at that dragon you get. Let's check one other thing. Let's check the wallpapers. Let me blow that up. Yeah, we got a lot of wallpapers. I don't know if they're Garuda ones. I think so. Yeah, these are all Garuda wallpapers. So pretty nifty, but I'll tell you what, I, I like the dragon the best. Let me try this guy, I guess. There you go, Garuda Linux. I'm gonna leave it on this system for a while and play around. Shoot some comments below. Let me know how you think I should try to break it. And let me know, are you gonna try Garuda Linux tech harders? You know I am. Peace out!